And now, broadcasting from the Darkroom Studio at Craven Community College, it's In the Know. Hey everybody, welcome to In the Know. Uh, this is the weekly podcast we do here from the campus of Craven Community College here in the Dark Room Studio, located in the Public Radio East Studios in Barker Hall. I'm Craig Ramey, I'm one of your hosts here, but I don't do this thing by myself. I'm joined by two other people at the desk. Let's run the camera down the table and see who we got with me. Good morning, Megan Johnson. Hello everybody. Hello Craig, good morning. Hello. It is August 31st, Wednesday, August 31st. But it's never morning. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always multiple times during the day. Oh, that's I, right. Yeah, I didn't that's mean right. to throw you off that way. Hello. That's okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, you threw me off already, like yeah. 30 seconds into it. And to my right, we have... Hey guys, it's Wendy White. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast where we like to be silly and have fun and maybe throw in some questions and trivia. I think we've done that a couple of times before. Do we have trivia today? Uh, yeah, I think we've got some trivia. We've awesome. got some, some history from today. We've got a special guest. Today's a little bit different. Normally we do the show live. Today we're trying something just a little bit more fun, doing a little pre-recorded show so we can be silly and edit out anything that we do wrong today. Oh, we're going to keep it all in. Yeah, there. we'll keep we're it all keep in. We're going to keep it all in. Yeah, we always all keep it all in. <laughs> um, but yeah, so today's a little bit different. So whenever you're watching this morning, night, afternoon. Oh, in fact, when I came in. Enjoy. Just watch lady, it today. The, yeah. the lady that does... Um, I can't think of what that little desk out there mm -hmm. in front of student services. Mm -hmm. She was actually watching our show. Uh, she got off the phone and I could hear my voice and it was the birthday one. She watches our show every week. Yeah. I know, but she was, I don't know, maybe she was replaying it because it yes. was so good. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Is that a possibility? It's very it's possible. It's very possible. It was one that we were extra silly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I do want to let everybody know that we have a special guest joining us on the show today. We have Megan Margram from the Volt Center, and she's going to be showing us how to make a special drink that you may want to uh, use coming up for Labor Day weekend. Yes. We've got a three-day weekend coming up. I hope everybody's excited about it. I am. You seem like you're not sure. Well, <laughs> I don't have plans, so maybe that's a good thing. But Okay. Yeah, yeah. just wing it. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. I will. And, uh, of course, we got our trusty production team in the booth. Do you all have a camera today or no? No camera. Uh, but we thank you anyway. We heard Holly's voice earlier. Hello. There's Holly. She's in the background, but we don't get to see her today. Right. And uh, Eli, who normally leans in and gives us a wave, uh, is not doing that today either because we have no camera. So he's not even acknowledging <laughs> but it. But he still has great hair. Yeah. Show me your great hair, Eli. <laughs> Hi! Yeah. There it is. <laughs> so what we'll do later is uh, we'll and cut this we out and we'll cut in a picture of, of, uh, of Eli waving. We yes. Yeah, we also have Zanetta Padilla back there joining us on the show. Uh, she's going to be helping us out in the booth. Uh, new addition to the marketing team, so we're happy to have her as well. Can we hear Zanetta's voice? Hi. Hi. There, there we go. Nice. There we go. <laughs> all right, cool. So we got... She said two letters and she got all like... <laughs> embarrassed <laughs> no well she didn't know i was going to call her up to the mic that's okay that's all right yeah around us you never know you, you never, never know, know what's going to nope. happen on this show no nope. yes you never know if the show's even going to happen <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> is it happening right now as Fair. i said before we started is this a simulation i don't know i never know is it no you're not going to tell me no <laughs> you know Keep yeah, you guessing on that one. Yeah, I appreciate that, Wendy. I can them. always count on you to keep me uh, well-footed in reality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Megan, tell us what's happening. Oh, it's, right. it's a national Shit. day of something. It oh, is right. a national something day. Fun. So I actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Today is National Diatomaceous Earth Day. Now, do you guys know? Diatomaceous. Does that D-I-A-T-O-M-A-C-E-O-U-S. Diatomaceous. Diatomaceous day? Can you add that mm -hmm. in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> like a sentence that says diatomaceous means. Yes. Do, do you know what diatomaceous is? Um, let me see day? the. Let me see how it's spelled again. Diatomaceous. Oh, diatomaceous Earth Day. Yes. Earth okay, it's all day. together. Um, it is a day where we celebrate that we all agree that the Earth is round. And not flat. Well, I think we should agree upon that anyway, but no, that's not correct. <laughs> we should agree on it. <laughs> not everybody I does. I agree. So um, it recognizes that a diatom and the remarkable, remarkable mineral it creates. 
So most people know diatomaceous earth because they use it around their home. Sometimes they use it in a filter for swimming pools or as a natural insecticide. Biologists understand that diatoms, which are single cell <laughs> plants, are you laughing when, at Wendy, me? No, Wendy and I are both looking at each other just like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> My non science people, right? My non science people. 100%. So, not so, <laughs> so, biologists understand that diatoms, which are single celled plants, they form diatomaceous earth and are needed or are and are indeed the lungs of the earth. So, when these, so it's a bond or it's so a. So, amazingly, diatoms produce about three fourths of the world's new oxygen supply. Oh, wait. I know about this. I heard <laughs> about this recently. Yes, yes, yes. I saw it on the the show. It's that on discovery thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The where they have geographic. Mm-hmm. And they have Earth. different astronauts who spend a lot of time on mm-hmm. the International Space Station, and uh, one of them they talked about diatoms and how they're really responsible for how we even are existing on Earth. Yes. If they hadn't done their work, there would be no oxygen. Another so, scientist. Yeah. Now Wendy's left out. Yeah, I'm out. So another <laughs> scientist okay. known as material scientists recognize diatom skeletons, um, at, and they're called. Frust- frustules. Yeah, frustules. they're all collected on the bottom of the ocean. Imagine tiny, intricate, porous opal structures. They are known to be the most durable, natural occurring substances in the world. Yeah, there's like miles and miles of depth of diatoms sitting at the bottom of the ocean. So thank God for the diatom. Mm-hmm. So today is National Diatomaceous Earth Day. Yeah. So um, great. The, yeah. Yeah. The remaining opal <laughs> frustules, fruit, frustule, frustules, okay, <laughs> form diatomaceous earth. Some of the largest deposits in the U.S. are formed in the ancient lakes in California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. They also formed in oceans that occur on the coast of North and South America. Yeah. Pretty cool. Do you want to know how they're some how they're used in products? I don't know. Are so we, did we, we eat also, one today? I'm sorry to say, where's we the food diatom- today? <laughs> we call diatomaceous, they're, we're going to use the uh, a fried earth, diatomaceous a, sandwich. Right? De- <laughs> today, DE, that's what we're going to call it, is one of the most useful and durable substances known. DE sees nearly universal use in the filtration of liquids, like your pure filter, right? Um, for example, DE filters the beer and wine we drink. It also filters. Finally, the- something that relates to <laughs> Wendy's <laughs> world. <laughs> Um, it also. Are you a diatom? Is that what we've learned? Evidently so. You need I a did. diatom. Your yes. liver's your diatom. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. That's your DE. Yes. <laughs> so another DE <clears throat> use is in paint, and it removes the sheen from flat paint um, or and making it flat, making flat paint flat. In plastics, it's used to prevent blocking in plastic film. I don't know what that means. I okay. guess to make it clear, right? Yep. Additionally, when oil spills, recovery specialists often turn to DE to absorb the oil. So this is kind of like something floating in the water. That Which just, is kind of cool. You know, yeah. I mean, you think it's natural. It's not like they're throwing some chemicals and sawdust or whatever to soak up the oil. Well, if the ocean's already full of diatoms, why don't they just work harder to take care of it? Like Stop laying it around diatoms. Get to work. <laughs> to the top. They Start being a lazy the, diatom. They're going to stir the pot. Get them up to the top. That's so, what they do. Yes. Just sound like that. There's a ship that goes out there and goes, get them up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> All day, every day. Okay. So, it's a drill sergeant. It's not an actual drill. Yeah. It's just a drill sergeant, sergeant. that commands them <laughs> to get to the top. Oh, my no, goodness. No, that's not what happens. Okay. So I n- we've talked about this before. You guys like camping, right? Yes. And we I'll enjoy- talk about camping with somebody this morning. And we enjoy cocktails this and morning. outdoors and, yeah. right? Um, yes. Yes. I'm an outdoors person. Yes. Yes. So today is National Eat Outdoors Day. So I nice. think I, I actually said something to Craig. Can you imagine if we had done this? We had, we had thought about it. Yeah. Do we were talking about doing the show outside. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. We could have done a pre recorded show outside. outside. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> uh. Yeah. It could have been fun. It could but, have been. but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that is a technological challenge that we're not quite ready for yet. We don't have the gear for it yet. So if you are not sitting here, because for us right now, Recorded time. It's yeah. lunchtime. Uh-huh. So if you could transport yourself somewhere outdoor to enjoy a meal, mm. where would it be? Uh, well, for me, I would go back to Key West. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, be there on the beach would be where I would go if the weather was, you know, cooperating. Yeah. An umbrella, a Yeti. 
somebody bringing you food? A sandwich? Like, bringing me food, or yes. yes. Are you yeah. more of the sandwich person, snack person? I mean, you can eat anything outside. Um, yeah. Especially with... <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. it's going to make a big mess. You can have as, the portions right. as large as you want. Of course, right. it could be dripping down. You can yeah. just jump in the yeah, ocean and just, clean yourself yeah. off. Be the sandwich and... Okay. Someone bringing it to me on a nice tray. Yeah. <laughs> um, outside. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Like, like yeah. where in the world would yeah. you be? Yeah. And who would you be with? Uh, you'd be my husband. Okay. You'd be there. Yeah. yeah. What Good about answer. You? <laughs> <laughs> Just me and my and my, my hammock tray boy and sandwich. <laughs> I've got my hammock boy. <laughs> what about where, you, Megan? Where, where do you want to be? Go? Where would I be right now? Because um, I think I want to go somewhere a little bit cooler. Yeah. You know, like, and go somewhere I've never been. I w- I'd love to go to Maine. And I think Maine in August has got to be pretty good because it's not 100 degrees like it is here. Yeah. And real humid. So I thought that's kind of on my bucket list. I think that'd be fun and sit by the waterside in a little village somewhere and eat my little lobster sandwich. What do they call those little lobster rolls? Lobster roll? Lobster roll. Have mm-hmm. my little lobster roll, fresh lobster roll. And I would, ha- of course, have my husband with me who cannot eat them because we'd have to epipen him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but we'd find something for him to consume. But that'd be fun. I think I would enjoy that. Yeah. Right now, my daughter came home. She's, um, she and her friend from school, they only have a first period right now. Their second period is a college class, a seated psychology class at the high school. And then her other two classes are online, their college classes. So they came home from first period. They came to our house, grabbed a bunch of snacks, waters that I'd put in the fridge for them, packed a picnic, made sandwiches, and they're off to the beach. So they're exploring. They're right enjoying there. Eat they're Outside enjoying, Day. Yeah, love nice. it. National Eat Outdoors Day. What yeah. about you, Craig? Uh, I would go somewhere in the mountains. I would not have somebody serving me. I'd probably be on a hike where I would have a, a much smaller, simpler meal. Camping out, mm-hmm. cooking your own. Or if not even camping, like that's one of my things that I do like to do if I go on a hike somewhere. And even like when I was in Asheville a couple of weeks ago, is uh, I had a meal uh, by a waterfall. You know, it wasn't a super fancy one, but I could pack everything up that we it needed. It wasn't a super fancy nice. waterfall? The, the waterfall <laughs> didn't have enough gold. It didn't have enough diamonds. There wasn't a Scrooge McDuck. It was not McDuck a five star waterfall. Swimming through a pile of coins and doubloons. No. Dabloon? Doubloons? Doubloons? <clears throat> what are those? Uh, like pirate treasure. Oh. Yeah. You know Scrooge McDuck when he's. Doubloons? Do you, know, do you know who Scrooge McDuck is? I do. Okay. And at the beginning <laughs> of the cartoon, he's, he's swimming. Am I alone in this? Does anybody else know? <laughs> Never heard I'm of out the show. I'm just going <laughs> to. He swims through piles of coins. But anyway, yeah, it, the waterfall was beautiful. Scrooge McDuck. But yeah, I just sat on a rock. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, having I, I think where I would go outside also depends on the time of year and the season, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, for right now, the summer, somewhere on a beach. It doesn't have to be Key West, but, you know, and then the fall, somewhere in the mountains. So you can yep. enjoy the scenery, enjoy the beautiful the breeze, leaves. and the Yeah. S- the smells change. Yeah. I think yeah. it depends on what time of year, mm-hmm. season, as to where I would really go. Yeah. I mean, we enjoy our back porch just like you do. Oh, I love our porch. it's been so hot. Mm-hmm. And, and the gnats have been really bad this summer. I don't yes. know if you guys have noticed, but the yes. gnats are like, Ugh. So, um, you hold on to that thought about your picnic. I mean, about your hiking. Okay. No, I'm gonna be. I'm going there right now. No, in my no, head. he's hold already on. there. He's <laughs> hiking next to a waterfall, <laughs> the five star waterfall, the fancy one. Yes. Okay. So, what does al fresco mean? Outside. Mm-mm. In the air. Oh. But it does oh, refer to outdoor dining. That's the technicality. I, yeah, so this you was, win. This was you the win. one that I thought was kind of funny when I started. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to talk about this one. Is outdoor dining a new fad? I'd say locally here in New Bern, yes. Because of closing the streets yes. downtown. I would argue us. that at some point in history, people were eating before they created shelter. So I'm going right. to I'm gonna get real technical here. And say, you know what? <laughs> you are correct. Yeah. It says humans have been eating outdoors for, for yeah. centuries, yeah. sometimes yes. out of necessity. Caves, huts, teepees, covered wagons don't always have a lot of space for indoor eating. Yeah. Right. But they were definitely al fresco. Yes. Yes, they <laughs> so, were. All right. What are some of the best foods to eat outdoors? Just Just about anything can be eaten outdoors, depending on your setting, as we talked about. However, some foods are better than others when it comes to portability and convenience. Sandwiches, finger Mm -hmm. foods, fresh fruits and vegetables Mm -hmm. all fit in the picnic profile. When we're looking, when we're cooking at home, nearly anything can be on the menu, including soup. (laughs) <laughs> Did you love like the so sound excited. effects yeah. <laughs> yes. that was my soup so back to your trail though I mean your your 
taking a hike. Yes. Today's also National Trail Mix Day. So really National talk Trail about- National Trail Mix Day? Yeah, so portability, eating outdoors. I mean, could we have put this together any better? If I had known, I would have brought trail mix. I'm not even kidding. So I was going to, and then I was- now You wouldn't like it though, I right? I would. I like trail mix. But I don't put M&Ms in mine. Oh, yeah, and I'm out. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and you don't like the raisins. So this is a funny thing. So do you know trail mix is sometimes referred to as GORP, G-O-R-P. So when I was a Girl Scout, we used to make GORP. Okay. Okay. You guys ever heard that term I before? Mean, just like just You've never heard that term pour before? Pour this bag no. of nuts I've, in. Pour I've this never bag heard of the term in. making gorp. Okay, so say. it can be, so trail mix or gorp is, can be filled with nuts, dried fruits, grains. Trail mix packs can boost uh, carbohydrates when the body needs it most. The nuts supply good fats, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But gorp is actually an acronym. You know what it means? Grains, oats, raisins, peanuts. Actually, it means good old raisins and peanuts. Okay. <laughs> good You're pretty old close, raisins though. That was peanuts. good. Yep. So, it, it had to be an acronym because nobody would try and call something appetizing gorp. gorp. Right. Gorp. Like, let's get some gorp. <laughs> actually, this is kind of cool. Now, there, I'm going to open up actually, a restaurant next to a fancy waterfall, and I'm only going to serve gorp. gorp. Yeah. yeah. But, but it'll be on a, on a tray. So, Wendy, you'll be there. Love you'll it. enjoy I'll it. I'll be there. Yeah. But the fun tray. part is you could get gorp any way you want or trail mix. You can Correct. get it as protein. Um, you can get it sweet and salty, mm-hmm. spicy. You can do a fall blend with cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves and allspice and ginger or savory blend. Now, because you like the sweet stuff, don't you? But you like savory, <laughs> I like, too. I like how you just gave me a nickname. Savory, savory blend. Yeah. <laughs> That's the next coffee. Yeah. Savory. Yeah, it might so, be. Yeah. So anyway. So um, maybe our guest, when we have her on in just a, a little bit. In a hot second. She's going to tell us about all the gorp that they're making over in the kitchen at the, the Volt. You think Correct. they're making gorp over there? Maybe. Probably not. Never know. They could. I'm going to go to the Volt kitchen and make some gorp. Now, I, I, I'm going to go language arts for just a hot second, okay? Because remember I said gorp was an acronym? It's actually a, and I never heard this term before, a backronym. Have you ever heard of a backronym? Backronym. A backronym. What does that mean? <laughs> it means that Backwards. it was an acronym that was developed after the word was coined. So somebody called it GORP. So it really was named GORP. And then and someone then said, oh, said created a, acronym. a backronym. So well, I would, all raisins somebody and peanuts. did call it a GORP. I would argue that in a lot of cases, people come up with the acronym first. There's there's no way all of those military it missions... It got were, lost in the... <laughs> No, I mean, if you're trying to come up with the name of a mission, you're not going to name the mission and then... Come up with what that means. Yeah. You're going to have You're going to come up with a flashy, cool little acronym, and then you're going to come around. it was in the Oxford Dictionary first. GORP. So GORP. G-O-R-P was in there. Yeah. And it meant to eat greedily. And so it had a definition. Oh, that's different. That's just gobbling down food. GORP, GORP, GORP. (laughs) (laughs) Make your soup sound. Gorp, gorp, gorp. <laughs> right? Isn't that how it goes? Yeah. Okay, and another one. This plus. is also what they teach you at the Volt Kitchen to not do. Slurp your soup. Don't slurp your soup and gorp your gorp. Although it is it is <laughs> polite to slurp your soup in um, some Asian countries. I've I've heard that the proper way to eat your soup is to slurp it, and that just seems wrong to me. I'm yeah. not going to agree to it. I don't want to hear people slurping you their soups. I pay attention how I eat you know soup. I, I, don't just... like, I don't like hearing people slurp their coffee when it's hot and they go... I'm like, oh, I'm guilty of that because yeah. it's Do hot. So misophonia? First... Misophonia? Mm-hmm. Is that a backronym? <laughs> it is, yes. It's a long one. We don't have time to get into it. That's okay. okay. Australians and New Zealanders, they call trail mix what? Trail mix? <laughs> Gulp? Scroggin. <laughs> Gorp and Scroggin? Gorp and Scroggin. Okay. That would would be our Danish friends. Uh, Yep, yep. When you put the two together, it's Gorp and Scroggin. Gorp and Scroggin. Yep. So, um, okay. Well, we're going to have eating outdoors and drinking outdoors and going al fresco. And I think that is the perfect transition to introduce our guest. I think think? so, too. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So, uh, talking about eating and drinking, of course, we've got... Uh, Megan Margram from the Volt Center, and she is in charge. She's got an official title that I, I don't know what it is right now, but she's in charge of the kitchen, <laughs> right? Coordinator. She's good. Okay. Coordinator. She's a coordinator. She's a coordinator. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, she can say it as well. Um, but she's going to show us how to make something very special today that we might want to make around the house over Labor Day weekend, right? Sounds delicious. It looks delicious too. So uh, let's kick it off. Uh, are we going to do this as a TBD talk or we're we just going to throw it over to Nah, no, we'll just have some oh, fun. Throw it All right, over. so um, welcome to the show, Megan. Yay! Yay. Woo! Okay, 
Okay, hello, I'm Megan Margram. I'm the coordinator at the Volt Kitchen, which just kicked off its classes a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna show you today how to make something I call everything but the kitchen sink sangria. And when I told Craig I was gonna make this, he was like, interesting. But basically, it's a really great thing to make, especially if you're having surprise guests over or something like that. I take things I just already have at home, like I usually have a half-drank bottle of wine at all times, <laughs> some sort of liquor, and then I usually try to keep a bottle of like champagne or sparkling wine in case someone's celebrating something, so I usually have that, and then fruit that I usually didn't eat during the week or something, and uh, different juices and stuff, so there's really no rules exactly as to what goes in it. You want to have certain base things but it's just a fun thing you can kind of make up as you go. So this Labor Day weekend, when all of a sudden your in-laws and all your aunts and uncles and everyone show up, you can have something delicious to drink for them. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. The first thing you wanna do is fill up your pitcher with ice. Okay. And then the first thing I usually do is I just take whatever wine I'm using to make it and I go ahead and pour it in. And this is just a rosé but I just start with that to kind of see where I am depending on how much wine I have left in the bottle. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and add, I used peach schnapps so I have this rule. White wine sangria use a clear liquor so usually I use like a light rum but I just had peach schnapps at home so I brought that. And I'm going to measure it, and I'm going to do four ounces. It's like four and a half, but that's good. Red wine, I always do brandy for a red wine sangria. And that's more like in the fall, and you can add like cinnamon and different things to that. So I do that. Then I'm going to add, I have some white grape juice. These are all just juices I had at the Volt Kitchen, so I like to use ruby red grapefruit, white grape, and I just put a little bit in there. I don't put less juice than I did wine. Yes, <laughs> more wine, less juice. Then I'm going to do a little bit of cranberry just to give it a nice little color there. Eyeball these? Sangria, yeah. I feel like sangria, there's no rules. It's just f it's a fun thing. You make it up and somehow it always ends up tasting good. Pineapple juice, I'm just going to do a little bit of that. Make sure you shake it, please. That's important. And hmm, looks good to me. And then for triple sec, you can use alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Usually I use alcoholic, so most people do. I'm going to go ahead and measure it, which I'm going to do one and a half ounces of that. But this is non-alcoholic, so. And then I made this vanilla syrup in our last bartending class, and I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. Just tell us how you made that? Vanilla syrup, so I like to do it. You can do it. There's two ways you can do it. You can do easy way or hard way. Easy way is you take, you make simple syrup, which is just half sugar, half water. So the ratio, like two to two, two cups of sugar, two cups of water. Put it on the stove, boil it up. And you can add just a little bit of vanilla extract to it until you get the right flavor. Or the way I like to do it is I get vanilla beans, cut them open, get, get the insides out, put them in there and um, it definitely it tastes way way better if you do it that way but if you're in a pinch you can just do vanilla extract and this is just I mean I wouldn't always add this to sangria I just had it so it's like I said everything but the kitchen sink it's something that was in the kitchen so I grabbed it just like that sounds good then one of the most important parts of sangria is the fruit so today I brought a peach I got orange I got some lemon and I got some raspberries Again, all things we already had at the Volk Kitchen. So you just start adding those in there. 
Those are my peaches. I got orange slices. You don't have to add all of them, but you know, until you feel good about it. Megan, when you're picking fruit that you want to put into your sangria, how important is color versus taste? Like, are you going for something that looks good or something that has a specific flavor, a little bit of both? I'm usually going for something that looks good. I mean, you want it to, everything needs to taste good, obviously, but I like it to look good. Um, that's mostly like the raspberries in here. I chose those just to give it an extra pop of color. I might have done like strawberries or something. But the raspberries are just for color. I honestly don't think raspberries have a lot of flavor, so. But then it just gives it a little, you can see them, so it just gives it a little extra pop. Is it best to muddle the fruit? No. No, I just let it float. I just let it float. Um, and then, because like I said, it's mostly for presentation. The fruits, the longer the fruit sits in there, the more alcohol it soaks up. So then when you get to the bottom of your glass, you have like this alcohol soaked little treat. <laughs> Which is like, that's why everybody's like, the longer you let sangria sit, the better. Because they want the alcohol fruit out of it. And then to top it off, Oh, some people will do like Sprite, like a lemon lime soda or something, but I just say bubbly because you want to have a little bit of carbonation in your sangria. Some people will just do plain soda water, but I like to do just a sparkling wine. And I'll just top it off. Ooh, I like that. Almost, that looks delicious. <laughs> Try not to overflow it. <laughs> Are you making your soup sounds? <laughs> <laughs> Give it a little stir. And then you can see, like, I made this whole pitcher of drinks. And what did I really, I used a little bit of juice here and there, a half a bottle of wine. I mean, I used three fourths or one third of this bottle of wine and just a little bit of that. So, I mean, it's a great way to make a drink for a big group. That's why I love to say everything in the kitchen sink because I usually have some sort of something like this at home. And then all of a sudden I turn my half a bottle of wine into drinks for everybody. So that's why I love it, especially for Labor Day and holiday weekends. Because also you could just take this outside, you know, for al fresco. Al fresco. <laughs> yeah, you could take this outside and uh, you're good to go. I'm going to pour you guys some little samples. And then in my glass, for my garnish, I just skewed a little lemon and raspberry. And usually people put them on the rim or something, but I feel like when you skew it, it makes it look fancier. So. I like to do that. Yeah, it's all about looking fancy. It looks just like Key West drinks. I love it. So you still want to put a little bit of ice in your glass for your people. Oops. And I always say garnish. There's one very important rule with garnishes. If they can't eat it, do not put it on the glass. It's a golden rule. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because some people might not know, no, no, you're not supposed to eat it, and they'll eat it anyways. People do that with flour sometimes on drinks, and they're like, oh, you're not supposed to eat that. I think it was a flour last time. Maybe. It was an edible flour last time. I have I made so many drinks since then. I don't even remember what I made. And then usually, especially with a pitcher like this, because it has like that pour spout, you're not getting any of the fruit. So I'm a, I would take just take a spoon, and make sure they get some goodies in there. And the great thing is, like, we always make in restaurants sangria. That's like anytime you think the wine's about to, you know, turn, we're like, okay, put it all in a big old bucket and let's make sangria. It's the best way to save money. Like this wine I had, I think I drank some of it maybe last weekend, so it needed to go. So I was like, let's just put it in sangria. Because then even if it's, like, not perfect wine, it can at least, like, the juice masks it and you still get to get buzzed off of it. <laughs> but yeah, I just try to grab people. Usually I'll use a pitcher that doesn't maybe have such a pour spout, but I broke mine. My neighbor was so nice to let me borrow this. 
Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have just grabbed this. They haven't been plugging in yummies. That's right. Yeah, That's true. Delicious. And then, you know, give them a little sip of straw. And ta-da, everybody's happy. And they got a nice, nice drink for al fresco. <laughs> <laughs> If you do this on the boat, maybe skip the glass, but all totally doable. It's going to do because you, this is something you can make ahead of time, and that's nice. And then you look fancy. Now, this is something like that you would teach at the Volt Center and something that you would like. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would oh. definitely teach them this. Um, we do have a bartending class coming up, a night class. We still have some slots open, um, and that's going to be September <gasps> 12th. Um, and that goes from 5.30 to 8.30. And, and I, your class I, is usually full, right? It's usually yeah, uh, tapped still, out. Yeah, it's usually full. So, because uh, my max is 12. I think right now there's nine enrolled. So, we still have, still have a couple of seats left. So, go online. And, and are, are you getting students in there who are currently working in restaurants or people who are looking to work, start working and this is sort of the first step, or a little bit of both? or? I get a little bit of both. I've had some restaurants send me people, mm -hmm. um, like servers who want to become bartenders. I've even had people who are under 21 who take it so that when they do turn 21, say they're like 19 or 20, and they want to be a bartender and they already work at a restaurant as a server or something, they'll take it and then so they can say to their boss, well, I took this bartending class, mm -hmm. so now you can let me bartend, right? Yeah, nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, I get... I. I pretty much trained all the bartenders at Captain Ratty's, so if you ever get a bad drink there, you need to tell on them. Because <laughs> <laughs> they know better. Send yeah. their names to the teacher. Yes. She will take care of that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I get a good mix. I mean, I just had um, somebody out of the military took my last class, and now he's bar backing at Cypress Hall. Yeah. So that was really great, because he'd never even tried out hospitality. I sent out his resume to different places and Cypress Hall called him and mm -hmm. I mean that's a great place to work he's going to make some moolah so yeah that's what is, awesome what is bar backing what is bar that backing it's like a bartender's assistant oh you're okay. running and getting them ice you could pour beer and wine for them and stuff like that restocking their stuff mm -hmm. but it's a great way to learn more about bartending usually most people start as a bar back Okay. Yeah, it's where you learn to do all the work. You don't necessarily learn how to make the drinks themselves but right at first, but yeah, you're you're, you're getting in scene. Yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should be watching. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. What was that Tom Cruise movie where he threw cocktail? The bottles? Cocktail. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. You don't teach any of that stuff though. No, but no. you know, you get people who think they can do it though. Dean sure. Foster over there at the Vault Center. <laughs> I just can never get a word in about bartending without him mentioning that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Does, does he think he's Tom Cruise? Yes, he does. Yeah, of course he does. He does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> it's fun to try. I'm sure you've tried it. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, About, yeah. definitely have tried it. Yeah. There's, you know, you'll get little, like, isms you do behind the bar that people think are really cool, but they're kind of just like you're, like, I, when I count, I pour up really high and then down, and it, like, helps me count it, but people think I'm, like, being very fancy, like, they're like, ooh, yeah. look at her. Yeah. <laughs> so there's little isms you can do to make yourself look even better, so. Mm -hmm. huh. It's fun. You get to play around. Trade secret. Yeah. Yeah. Well, plus, when you're a bartender, you have a lot of downtime, right? When it's busy, it's very busy, but you got to be there before things pick up, so... Mm -hmm. You can end up with so some you time can cut sitting lemons. around. Yeah, you do mm -hmm. cut lemons. Cut I came lines. here early and cut fruit. Yeah, yeah. That's we usually every it. restaurant or or when I've bartended, that was the first thing you had to do when you got in. Is you, you start were a bartender? Yeah, you just asked me that like two minutes ago. <laughs> 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 yes. Rewind and watch uh, that, guys. Just, yeah, just a little. Not a, not a lot. Not a lot. I didn't know if you answered me. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> He's messing with you now. <laughs> so yeah. Craig's going to come teach the next no, class. It was, no, it was years ago. I, I never took a class, uh, so I was never a good one. It was just kind of a... I just. We need you here. Yes. For yeah. these drinks, we're good. Yes. <laughs> I have a question. I mean, it's still kind of barista-ish. So coffee. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you'll teach there? Like how to be a barista? Because yeah. I know that a lot of places don't want you... They don't want to hire you unless you've had experience. Well, it's hard to get experience if you've not yeah, been given a chance. Yeah, exactly. So is that something that we might start offering? Yeah, so I've, I've talked with um, a couple different coffee places about doing a barista 101 class. Um, and, you know, 
I kind of I was talking to someone who worked at a Starbucks and they put them through the most intense training. So I was like, oh my gosh, we need to do this because I mean I just got a text today, Crema Brew, looking for people to work. So um, there's no shortage of jobs, but yeah, we're definitely working on developing. I mean, there's a new class idea every day in my head. It's just getting it done on paper and getting it online yeah. and finding people to teach it. Yes, because unfortunately, I'm not versed in every single thing. I could fake it till I make it, though. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think a lot of people would be into you being able to teach uh, baristas because then yeah. we get to go over there and have coffee whenever we want to. Yeah, right? I'd take a class and, you know, I mean, I was a barista when I was 15, okay? Yeah? Yes. That was my first job. So nice. It's probably still in there somewhere. I, th I think hospitality is the first job for a lot of people. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's such a good job to have too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's character building at at its finest, mm -hmm. at its toughest for yeah. sure. Because you deal with so many different kinds of people, so many different time constraints and pressure, and you're working so close with people. I mean, it's it's a fight 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 and get game there. That's yeah. all I can say. It's it's tough, but it builds character. That's for sure. Yeah. Yep, and I still have the stress dreams about it. Yeah. And if you've ever waited tables, you have the stress dreams. Did I bring that yours. ranch to table 12? Yeah. <laughs> Forgot somebody's ketchup. Remember it yeah. as my eyes are closing. But right now we do also have our Fundamentals of Professional Cooking class going on. They just started, like, last week, and they, I mean— I just love those classes. They're such a gr good group of people. We have nine in the day and five at night, and they're so passionate and excited about it. I mean, the chef showed them how to make rice peel off the other day, and you would have thought he did the most amazing thing. They were like, oh, my God. And last night they made chicken noodle soup. So, I mean, they're, they're just such a good group, and I'm really excited for them because they're at the – it's a 15-week class, and at the end they're going to go out there and – from my experience working in restaurants so long, they're going to be some of the most knowledgeable people mm -hmm. in New Bern. I promise you. Um, so I'm really excited for them. And, and one's in the class now. It's the third week of class. He already got a job. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So wow. he's going to class during the day and cooking at night for a restaurant. But they're, they're going to be just superstars out there. And I'm really excited for New Bern to get these experienced people who can who can cook well and mm -hmm. work on consistency and stuff. So it's, it's going to be really good for the community. Yeah, because it takes a lot longer to build that skill when you're working on the job because yeah. you're always just kind of thrown into the thick of it. And nobody has time to show you why you're doing what you're doing or why you're doing it wrong until you've already done it wrong. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. You can get all those contact hours in before you even start working. Yeah, it's yeah. make or break there. Yeah. You either got it or you don't. They don't yeah. have time to show you. So yeah. this is great because they're going to have all the all the backup for it. So are there any other classes that are going to be starting at the Volt Kitchen soon that you need to let people know about? Yeah, so um, we are actually have our Serve Safe classes already going as well. So we have two refreshers coming up before the end of the year. But right now I'm working on a food and beverage operations class, which is more management side, mm -hmm. uh, more talking about money and, you know, profit margins and things like that. So, which that's a great one, even if you want to start your own business, yeah. say you want to start a food truck or something like that. I'm going to teach you how to make money, I promise. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's come in the works right now. Um, we have a guest room attendant class in the works right now, and that's housekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a really big one the community's asked for. And then hospitality maintenance has been, it surprised me, it's been the hugest one when I talked to the hotels they needed the most. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to Jeff Schultz, um, the director of trades, and I said, we got to get together because we have all these students who learn HVAC, plumbing, electrical. And so I need to take the basics of all of those. And then I need to take great customer service. We need to combine that and have a hospitality maintenance worker. So we're working on that as well, and I'm really excited <laughs> about. Um, I mean, we had a HVAC. I got an HVAC student a job at the DoubleTree, just mm -hmm. because she said, "Hey, I need I need maintenance workers." And I was like, "Well, I have people with little specialties." Yeah. So she that's ended awesome. up hiring her, and so it's great. I mean, and that's what's great about the vault. It really just connects the jobs to the actual people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people know that that's what we're doing over there. So they're coming to you all the time asking if you've got somebody who can do this. And if they can't, then can you train them to do it? Yeah. 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 And I, I just put up a job board last week, like a physical job board. Like I went back to 1995 and was like, all right, I'm going to put jobs on the wall. And um, I mean, people were just like, 
oh my god there's so many jobs and i'm like yeah guys the whole hospitality so, industry hurting yeah mm. yeah because the ones you have up on the wall they're not just like possible jobs in the world they're no. or, or like they're not career paths that necessarily you can that were up there just as examples to pursue their actual jobs that people are asking to have filled in the community right yep, now. Yep. Yeah. I, I reach out to all of um, the local industry partners and I say, what do you have open? Mm -hmm. And, you know, some answer me, some don't, but the ones who do good for them because they're going to probably get some good, pretty good candidates. Yeah. So awesome. email me if you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you um, right now, Sedesco, who runs the um, chow halls at Camp Lejeune, uh, Geiger, Johnson, and Cherry Point, they're taking Lean Six Sigma classes with us on Mondays. Oh, cool. And it's managers from each different level. So it's, you know, the ones who are doing staffing, that are doing the food, that are doing maintenance. And I hear that all the time, that they're looking for folks for that maintenance, somebody to come in and fix that dishwasher, yeah. to fix that water spout, you know, whatever. So um, that is an area. So I'll, I'll try to get you a connection on that. Yeah. One. And you know, I mean, I, I didn't really think, you know, starting the hospitality, I'd be doing like a class about maintenance, but mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. I'm like, this is going to be great. This is going to be fun. So um, working on that. I mean, the other day I was in a staff meeting. I was like, maybe we should do linemen. And Eddie's like, Megan, you have a kitchen. Can you just do that for a little while? And I was like, what about land surveying? So, you know, the vault, we're always coming up with new stuff. I mean, we run out of room before we run out of ideas. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to phrase that. Yeah. 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 Well, very cool. Um, so were there other things you want to talk about we had going on today, Megan, before we close things out? You had something, something in history. This day in history. Yeah. Yes. You bring it up. Uh, so there were two things I was going to mention about this day in history. Um, one of them, a um, bit of a bummer, maybe it's on your list. Is that one on your list? Yeah. No, I've, yeah. I did. Well, it could have been, but I didn't pull it up. Yeah. So, yeah, on this day in history, Princess Diana died. Mm -hmm. August 31st, 1970, 1997. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, she died in a car crash in Paris. She was being pursued by the paparazzi. Her and her boyfriend, uh, was it Dodi Fayed, I think? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, they were just trying to get away from paparazzi and hit a, a column in a tunnel. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. It was sad. Um, and I think that was one of the things that made people realize how dangerous it is to really invade people's privacy in that way. It's I don't think it's really been solved. It hasn't stopped, yeah. but yes. But I, I think it's it obviously raised a lot of awareness to those are actual people trying to live their lives. And, and it can be it's more than just a photo. It can actually change somebody's life forever. But um, somewhat that related. Uh, that. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Not that we have to worry about that. No. Are you kidding me? Do you have paparazzi hits shoes? This show is <laughs> taken off. I don't know if you're aware of this. I do get some really weird friend requests. Oh, do you? Uh, you think it's because of this show? Look at some of the posts. They get, yeah, they're little blurbs. Well, to be honest, because of the podcast is why I created the Facebook page. Oh. Really? Because I didn't have one before. Yeah. Megan you got to get your brand out there. I didn't said, fuss. Well, I just highly encouraged you. Yes. And she was actually my first friend request. <laughs> and then, yeah. so Because it popped up. I'm like, oh. Wendy has a Facebook. And then I screenshot it. I'm like, did you get hacked? No, you can't get hacked if you just got in. <laughs> <laughs> you could. Yes. Well, I guess actually, technically. You could. Your yes. picture. Yeah. yeah. Um. What's Spe something fun in history? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I should have brought the, the bummer. You, it was a good idea for you to not do it. I should have not done it. That's no. okay. I, no, anyway. I just didn't see it. I knew it happened in history because that was the year I got married. I got married oh, on yeah? the 16th of August, and then that was the first major news thing that happened in our, our married world. And I just remember sitting in our brand new home on mm -hmm. the couch, and I'm just watching it on TV. And so that's why I remember this day in history yeah. of that happening because... We had just gotten married, and this sad thing happened. So, mm. so it was a silver lining. You had a happy life going on, just as she had a tragedy going on yes, with hers. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. But yeah. yeah. No, Megan's giving me the look like just move on, Craig. Just keep going. I'll move on. Yep. Mm. Anyway, so August thirty first, eighteen ninety seven. Thomas Edison patents the connectograph. Do you know what that is? It's a camera. Yeah, because you had it on your thing yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> got to start uh, cheating on this yeah. trivia stuff. I have it called in a kinetoscope camera. So I think the kinetograph, kinetograph, which I, I assume means like moving picture, yeah. right, is the camera that captures it. And the kinetoscope is the projector on how you watch the finished product. 
Gotcha. I'm glad right? you figured all that out. Yep. Did you have a picture of that, Holly? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the camera itself, the kinetograph. Um, which, so one of the things I thought was really interesting about this is, uh, uh, so in 1877, inventor Edward Moybridge developed a primitive form of motion pictures when Leland Stanford, the governor of California, invited him to develop photo studies of animals in motion. And he developed an ingenious system for photographing sequential motion, which was setting up 24 cameras attached to trip wires stretched across a racetrack. And the horse would trip uh, a wire each time he went by. Um, and that was uh, how they were able to prove that a horse's legs all leave the ground at the same time when it's running, because they had a, a picture showing hmm. all four legs were off the ground. But what was also interesting to me is that they used 24 cameras in that experiment. Oh, wow. Do you know why that's interesting to me? Probably not. I'm waiting for it. Back then, no, that was a lot of cameras. That is a lot of cameras. Yeah. Um, but so most of the time when you're watching movies today, it's at 24 frames per second. You ever seen 24 FPS yes. frames per second? You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. So that's how most of what we watch and what we film is filmed. And from this very first experiment, they used 24 cameras to capture that. And if Kind of like horsepower. It is kind of like horsepower. <laughs> Use horsepower. And do you know what happens if you have a higher rate of frames per second? Uh, it goes fast? No. It's oh. the opposite. It it's an inverse reaction. Oh. <laughs> yes. So the <laughs> this show is show over my head. I, <laughs> yeah, so, for those of you like me, I'm sorry. This show is just <laughs> yeah. Because if you're today. if you're seeing more frames go through, but then you play it back at a normal speed, it slows everything down. So if you have lower frames per second, then it looks faster when you play it back later. Because it jumps more. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. Yeah. I got it. You yeah. Got see. You got anything else? I'll stop. No, I've put everybody to sleep with no. my Princess Diana death and my kinetograph of horses <laughs> running across a track. Everybody I'll rewind right. back to the alcohol. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, I got a couple. Nope. Benjamin Scheib. I've killed us. He received a He's patent done. for his invention of a baseball with cork in the center in 1909. That's kind of cool. You know, that bit of trivia really knocked it out of the park, Megan. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. 1936, Henry Blair. Do you know Henry Blair? Have you ever heard that name before? Mm -hmm. You have? No. Um, he, <laughs> patent, he patented a cotton seeder. So he was the second African-American to receive a U.S. patent. Okay. After, who was the first one? Thomas Jennings. So, anyway, isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. I think it's very cool. Yeah, um cool. Glenn Hammond Curtis completes the first U.S. airplane flight over water. Curtis is considered the father of the aircraft industry. 1910. That's kind of cool. I'm not going to consider him the father. It's Wright Brothers all the way. Okay. Show a little right, North gonna, Carolina pride. I'm going to end it with something fun. Ready? <laughs> okay. What is your favorite Warner Brothers cartoon character? Do you have one? Uh... So it's like Bugs Bunny, Warner Brothers or Bugs Bunny. I would say the, Bugs Bunny. I mean, he's the most popular one, I would say. So. I'll say, I'll say. <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn? Yes! Yeah. Yeah, so in 1946, they, um, Warner Brothers debuted Foghorn Leghorn. Looney Tunes. Winnie, do you know who that is? Yes, I Megan, do. Megan, do you know who that is? No. Yeah. I, I thought you might <laughs> so not, yeah. They they originally called him Walkie Talkie Hockey. Um... <laughs> Falco, oh, Fal glad they yeah. got a name change. Hockey, hockey. Yeah, Falcorn Leghorn's better. Do you have an impression, Falcorn Leghorn? Uh, oh, pro sure. probably best if I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've messed this up enough today. So, oh, 1955. I mean, you know, like solar cars and and um, electric cars are like the thing now, right? Everybody's pushing for that, right? Wait, what year? What are you talking about? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, the year. Okay, once again, is this really happening or is this a simulation? <laughs> okay. Is this 1955 now? Mm, I hope are we in Doc Brown's, d not Mandalorian, DeLorean? Yeah. <laughs> so in 1979, there was a time machine. Hey, wait a minute. Time what happened with time. the 1955? Okay, <laughs> General Motors came out with the first solar-powered automobile. The guy's name was William Cobb. And he demonstrated the, they called it the Sun Mobile. I think she had two straws too many. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is normal. <laughs> this is very normal. They called it the what? Sun Mobile. Okay. Sounds like it had a sunroof, but it didn't. It had solar panels. Boop. It didn't really take off, though. No, nobody's. 1955. Yeah. Sorry. That was it. Yeah. That was at a time when everybody was loving their nice big 
gas, gas guzzling, guzzling cars, cars. Yeah. <laughs> and they could throw a family of 10 in the back seat yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, what do we got going on in the community today? Uh, we got a few. Are we forgetting something, Holly? We're probably forgetting something. Was there some trivia we needed to talk about? Yep, Eli fixed us some trivia. Uh, Eli, Eli has some trivia for us. All, All right, right, are we ready? Let's mm-hmm. get it up. Let's All right, go. what do we got? What came first, the color orange or the fruit orange? It sounds fruit. like a backronym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Megan Margram, what do you think? I think the fruit. You think the fruit came yeah. before the color? But if the fruit was in existence then the color had to have been in existence we just hadn't said it yet is this whether or not the, or the word was first or the... okay or the color existed in the universe first <laughs> someone probably saw the fruit and thought which orange. one was called orange first the, the orange, color the or the fruit okay i see yeah. again i'm having an existential crisis today. <laughs> i'll go with fruit too all right you ready yes okay Orange was first a tree before a fruit, and a fruit before a color. So the word orange comes from the Sanskrit word naranga, meaning the fr- the tree that fruit grows. The fruit wasn't even orangely. <laughs> or- or- <laughs> Originally <laughs> orange, but green. <laughs> That's my first time reading it. Is that? <laughs> Yeah, so Eli put original. this together for us through a little pun. Nice job. Nice. Very nice. So I win. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Okay, next. A simple <laughs> yes or no would have worked. No, Meg- for Megan's us. like, I don't like you pulling that. So, you know. Pun on me. Yeah. We have uh, Megan was surprised with a little something yesterday, right? Oh, yeah, let's see that up on the screen. Okay. What's that all about? Hey, oh. Hey, look at that. Megan got a lifesaver yeah. award. Yeah. I yeah. Did. So Lifesaver Award is is what uh, our leadership team here at the college gives out to uh, staff employees who go above and beyond, do something great uh, that needed to be done. And uh, Megan really was instrumental in making sure that that Volt Kitchen came together and making sure that the, the equipment was ordered and went where it needed to go and talking with vendors and... Uh, talking with the community. It was a very long, drawn-out process. And so, One whole year. Yes. Wow. Nonstop. <laughs> Nonstop. Right? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, they went by there, I guess that was Monday, right? Yeah, it was, mm-hmm. I was very surprised. Yeah. I mean, when you don't do it for recognition and then people recognize you, you're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. And so, and then I really thought, first of all, Eddie... Dean Foster over there was uh, wearing his nice clothes. Yeah. And that was my first <laughs> suspicion. I said, why aren't you in blue jeans today? You were not the only person who noticed that change yeah, in the right? wardrobe. Yeah, and then Something's up. And then you had your lovely photographer come over to the uh-huh. kitchen, and I'm thinking, we have a photo shoot tomorrow. And she's yeah. like, I just need to get some little shots. And she's like walking around taking pictures of like coffee cups and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, what a fake it. I was like, okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> and then Dr. Boucher and Eddie come in and they're just talking to me regular. And I'm like, does anybody have anything better to do? <laughs> and then Dr. Stats walks in with the balloon behind his back and like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hello. And he goes, I got something. And I was just like, what is going on? Is this a simulation? Yeah, okay, exactly. <laughs> but it was super nice. Um, I'm really grateful. So it was gr- it was it was great. It's nice to be recognized. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's always fun. Those are always a surprise, right? Usually they try to make them a surprise. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I did talk with Zanette a little bit before she went over there. And I said, you're just going to have to make up a reason to be there until you need more shots of something. Yeah, and, she was early. She was yeah, on it. Yeah. So we get the surprise. So it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a few other things here, some community events we just need to hit on real quick. And then uh, we're going to be closing things out for the show today. Um, I want to do number three. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's called number three. <laughs> got it. Because <laughs> it just goes with what we talked about earlier. Okay. All right, Holly, you're running the show in there. What do we got? Do, 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 do. Well, got, I'll start number one. That okay. way we go in this way. Or okay. no, three. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. Just I mean, start. Summer concerts in the park, Thursday, September 1st from 6 to 9. This is the Havelock High School Jazz Band. We'll close out the city of Havelock's summer concerts in the mm-hmm. park. Bring a blanket or a chair and settle in for a night of music. This event will take place at the Havelock City Park. So, last one, go out and support the Havelock High School Jazz Band. And Magic Midway's Family Days. (laughs) (laughs) He always does that to us. (laughs) It's, uh... 
Friday, uh, September 2nd through Sunday, September 11th from 5 to 11 on weekdays and 3 to 11 on weekends. Enjoy 10 days of fun with plenty of great food, thrill rides, family-style games, face painting, kitty land for the little ones, and much more. Uh, they have debit cards being accepted and ATMs on site, <laughs> offering up clean restrooms and covered seating. Set up at Lawson Creek Park. <laughs> The restrooms are covered. I don't, I don't know if you're aware of that. Oh, it was the debit cards, like, oh, and here's my pin. Yeah, yeah, that w- they, you are required to offer up your it pin. It sounded really that, funny. That's, that's, you that's said that. the most dangerous ride there. Is, <laughs> the, is a debit what, card. Putting yeah, yeah, your yeah, debit yeah, card machine. in there. And, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, but it looks like fun. All right. Clean restrooms and covered seating. <laughs> All right. What you got, <laughs> Megan? Number three. You want a number three? <laughs> I want a Sunday one, number three. Street cafes and family game night, Friday, September 2nd from 5 to 10 p.m. Enjoy a variety of family fun games as you stroll through downtown New Bern eating al fresco. Ooh, eating why you want outdoor. To yeah, that so yeah, in. go back to, you know, we want to celebrate eating outdoors every day, not just today. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun. It's a yes. nice time of year to do it. Good time yes. of year. Oh, cool and, and the, it's, the heat's supposed to go. We're supposed to have like 80s this weekend mm. and low oh, humidity. Nice. All right. So enjoy it because we got a couple storms brewing. So mm. Shh. I know. Mm-mm. All right, Wendy, are you oh, next? Yeah, sure. Footloose on the news concert series the, is at the Tames. Am I saying that correctly? The Tams. 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 So join us and the Trent Cadillac GMC Footloose on the News Summer Concert Series. This is a free event and will feature the Tams, who will bring a blend of R&B, soul, and beach music. So again, bring a blanket and a chair. Enjoy great music, this time at the Union Point Park. Pets must be on a leash, no coolers. Food trucks will be available, and this is presented by our very own New Bern Parks and Rec. And they do have covered bathrooms. Yeah. They do. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm looking at their uh, outfits, which are awesome. And the hats that they're wearing are Tams, right? That's why oh. they're wearing those hats. Oh. Because they're the looks Tams. Like so it sh- looks, looks like a shower hat. It does. Yeah. It, I wasn't it, quite sure what it was. Yeah. So like um, at graduation, you know, you've got the mortar board. That's the, the flat mm-hmm. square, right? Megan's looking at me like I'm full of it. No, but I, yeah. I'm no, I'm yeah. Go, go but go. the tam is what um, the doctoral the uh, beanie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually tams are for uh, people who have PhDs, doctors. Yeah, cool. but those don't look like graduation tams. They're different tams. But don't go see the tams for their hats. Here's some classy looking dudes. <laughs> go see it for the suits. <laughs> Very cool. All right, is this this is me again? Sorry. We just just. To clarify, we are off the rails today. (laughs) Completely off the rails. Love it. Community Con invades Craven County. Saturday, September 3rd from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's uh, like a Comic-Con, except it's our version here in Craven County. Do you ever have a day where you just want to dress up as your favorite character from a game, TV show, or movie to escape the world for a brief moment? Every day, because this is not real. This is a simulation. Megan? (laughs) <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm asking you the question. Not unless it has a crown involved. Okay. I like capes, too, but though. But you could wear capes one. Capes and crowns. I can, can wear capes and crowns. Megan Margram. What? Do you like to uh, dress, dress up. up as your favorite yeah. character from the I'd game probably, or TV show? I'd probably be Sailor Moon, for sure. Who's okay. that? She said, girl, don't ask me that. <sighs> Who's yeah. that? That was a look of girl, don't you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's an anime, Sailor Moon. I mean, I don't know how you explain her. She's a legend. It's kind of like how I didn't know f- Froghorn. Leghorn. <laughs> Leghorn. <laughs> you don't know Sailor Moon. Foghorn, Leghorn. Yep. No, I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, it's not Frog? He's not a frog? No. no he's a, he's a <laughs> rooster. He's, oh. Yeah. No, he's... Um, we need to get a picture up really quick so yeah. we can get a frame Foghorn of reference. Leghorn. Foghorn, Leghorn's a rooster. I, I say, I say he's a rooster. <laughs> I say, I say, I say. Uh, <laughs> Okay, sorry, I'll move along. Um, Do you have a child who likes to dress up and reenact their favorite scenes? Well, here's your chance. The Craven County JCs will be holding a mini-con for the Craven County community at the fairgrounds. You're invited to come out and join others in the community to share your creativity with each other. There will be a costume contest with three age groups, so be sure to bring your A game when it comes to your costume if you want to participate. Get $5 off each admission price at the door. All you need to do is bring five canned food items to each person in your group. At the end of the event, all canned items will be gathered and given to Adelphia CDC for their continued efforts to bring food to those in the community who are in need. So what's your costume, Craig? You didn't say. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's not anybody I consistently like to dress up as a character. So, <laughs> which <laughs> is, I feel like that's the question yeah. they're asking. Do you have a day where you just want to dress up as your favorite character from? So, uh, the a way day, that's, yeah. a day. It doesn't yeah. have to be many days. I, or I or t- every day, just a day. Yeah. I, I, I don't have one specifically. I, I don't either. I so come I'm up with, with something you. for Halloween, and that's what I'll do. Right? And that and gi- and that gives me anxiety. Yeah. So yeah, I don't do one either. Yeah. I'm what did you do for Halloween last year? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You didn't have a costume last year. Um, me either. No. You neither. I will say though, the funnest year that I've done <laughs> Halloween was in the library in the testing center. We all dressed as Pac Man. We all were ghosts from. Nice. Chasing okay. each other around? Yes, all day long. It was great. It was fun. But I usually don't... Uh, that's out of my comfort zone. You've got all the sound effects today. Right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I remember the original Pac-Man, Megan, so just... <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> There's Not probably a colorful. drink called It was kind of like with Thomas right. Edison and the camera. That was kind of it right back then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So, today... Are oh, you done? There's one more on oh, here. Oh, tell, 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 tell. I did the last one. Do you want to do that one? Um, Stanley Spate Duel, whoop, whoop, um, this is, I'm sorry, I'm, my commentary, this had to have been one of the stupidest things in Newburn history, that these two men <laughs> were going to go have a standoff and they, shoot at each other. They did shoot they at each did. other. Yeah, they did, I had know to do that. It. A just, man died. They did and it, it was just <laughs> stupid, because the accuracy of those weapons was so bad. Anyway. Yeah, it, it was more than one shot. So Stanley Spate Duel, Spoiler you guys were alert. dumb dumb. Saturday, <laughs> September 3rd from 4 to 5 p.m. Was that in the script? Dumb <laughs> dumb? No. <laughs> no. So join the Triumph Palace for their annual reenactment, which will be very cool, and I love the history part of it. So I'm just, I just think the original duel was not a bright idea. The Stanley <laughs> Spate Duel is an inter- <laughs> interpretation of the infamous moment of Newburn's early history. On September 5th, 1802, a prominent Newburn lawyer met his political rival, a former state governor, and a lethal duel in the streets of New Bern. Like, just knock him out with your fist. I mean, just like a, you know. Like, That's not how gentlemen decide well, gentlemen issues with bad, of dishonor. Yeah, yes. gentlemen with bad weaponry. Um, so step back into time in an era where a man's personal honor was his most cherished quality and an inc- inc- <laughs> version <laughs> of his prized value could result in a fiery and violent retribution. Watch the drama unfold before your eyes in a gripping reenactment of this fate- fateful day. The event will be held at the Newburn Academy Museum, which features local history, architecture, and an exhibit of the Newburn Civil War history, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful building. So, Yeah, it's a great little museum. Yeah. yeah. It's a do you cool. recognize the reenactors up there? I do. Uh, you recognize one of them, I, I bet. Recognize yeah. one. Neil's one yes. of them, right? Yeah, Neil is on the left. Uh huh. In purple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other one is uh, Becky's husband, Matt. Yeah. Oh. Yep, yeah, Becky who works. Well, in the I'm just yeah. glad those two gentlemen. They love would, doing it. Matt loves not, doing it. Yeah, they yeah. would not. They would not resort to that in modern times. So, mm-hmm. good guys. No, actually, <laughs> this year's different. They're they're working out some issues. <laughs> yeah, it's a real. It's a real duel this year. Real reenactment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been writing letters back and forth to each other. Kicking each other's trash cans, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, nothing destroys a man's honor more than kicking over his trash can, <laughs> spilling his business all into the street. <laughs> his business. Yeah. His, his business. dirty laundry. His yeah. laundry, yeah. Sh- airing out his dirty his laundry. I'm Church. done. I'm done for the day. <laughs> you know. Okay, well we've had um, we've had our our uh, laughter therapy today, so that has been good. I hope people have enjoyed today. Um, we've had a lot of fun, interesting uh, trivia and history and science and delicious drinks. So we uh, we thank Megan for being our guest today. Yes, and thank you. we wish you all the best of luck with the um, the Vault Kitchen and as it continues to grow. So thank you, thank you. We are at the last day of August. It has been a good month. It's been a lot of celebrations of birthdays and good things. So, um, But I'm looking forward to September. So September 7th, we will be back. Um, that's next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. We look forward to it. We will have another guest. So please come and join us. So we're excited about that. You won't be with us? I won't be here. You'll have fun yeah. without me. We'll be sad that you aren't here. Yep. So, um, But uh, uh, are you doing something important or fun? Fun. 
Oh, good for you. Well, doing fun things is, is important, important, in my yes. opinion. Yes. Yeah. Now, I just didn't know if it we was should end the related. show with that right yes. now. Always remember. Self-care. 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 Yeah. Doing fun things Doing is fun important. Doing fun things is self-care. Okay. So, again, thank you for being here with us today. Um, it's been a treat, and we will see you next time. So take care. Take, be happy. Be safe. Be healthy. I did that backwards, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it was a backronym. It was a backronym. Bye. 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 <laughs>